Looking to protect your cards? Whether you need sleeves, deck boxes, binders, playmats, or even backpacks, Ultimate Guard has your collection covered. Literally. Premium products offering priceless protection. Visit ultimateguard.com. Hello and welcome to another standard gameplay video. This was recorded during the early Axis event, so thanks to Wizards for letting me participate and preview the new cards from Phyrexia on this fully unlocked account. Today we're taking a look at a mono green ramp deck featuring four copies of Nyssa, Ascended Animist. That's the Planeswalker we're trying to ramp into and ideally cast it for seven mana, so no life required in that case, and we'll get a seven loyalty Planeswalker which can immediately minus seven, giving all creatures plus one plus one for each forest we control as well as trample so a very powerful overrun effect especially in a deck with 24 basic forests and the main combo with nissa is awaken the woods which is a sorcery for x and double green creating x 1 1 green forest dried land creature tokens so these are creatures that also count as forests that can both attack with nissa as well as contribute towards our forest count to increase the power of the minus seven ultimate so that's what we're trying to set up then of course Nyssa can also be played for 5 mana and a bit of life and then it will come down with 3 loyalty in the case of 5 mana and 5 loyalty in the case of 6 mana. The plus 1 adds an extra loyalty counter and then generates a horror token with power and toughness equal to Nyssa's loyalty. And then we also have two copies of the Defiler of Vigor, which can be another nice creature to ramp into, especially alongside Awaken the Woods, as we can now maybe add a bunch of plus one counters to the entire team whenever we cast a green permanent spell. And of course, there's quite a few of those in the deck. At one mana, we're playing the new Evolving Adaptive, which will grow over time as larger creatures enter the battlefield. And then at two mana, we've got the new Armored Scrap Gorger, an O3 mana creature that can slowly pick up oil counters as we exile cards from graveyard. We do have to exile a card from a graveyard before it picks up an oil counter and then it can eventually turn into a 3-3 creature as well. And by exiling cards, we also get access to a bit of graveyard hate, which can be nice. Then we also have the full set of Loam Speaker as another mana creature, and then one copy of Azusa's Many Journeys to potentially play an extra land, which can be helpful when we're trying to enable Topiary Stomper, which requires seven or more lands in play before it can attack or block as a 4-4 with Vigilance, but it also gets to search a basic when it enters, so great for helping us ramp. And it also has great synergy with Awaken the Woods, as the Forest Dried tokens can help the Stomper attack and block, so we can potentially set up a very early kill alongside Nyssa. And then a full set of Bloated Contaminator, another new addition here, 4-4 four, four, Trample and Toxic 1. Not gonna poison the opponent to death, but whenever we get to deal damage to the opponent, we also get to proliferate, meaning we can add more oil counters to the Adaptive and the Scribe Gorger to grow them, as well as maybe add more plus one counters to the entire team once we have a Defiler going off, and maybe add more loyalty to our Nyssa as well, so the Contaminator has quite a bit of synergy besides just being a large creature. And yeah, then two copies of Defiler as the author payoff card. 24 basic forests, still playing a Boseju to have a tiny bit of interaction for enchantments. And then four copies of Bushwhack as a removal of choice. That can also be used to search an extra basic land. So if we feel like we need more mana, we can always search an extra forest. Especially helpful if we have the Azusa's Many Journeys, which requires us to have a lot of lands in hand for it to be really effective. So yeah, that's our deck. Now let's jump in some games and see how the deck does. Okay, we're on the draw, and uh, yeah, our hand seems keepable. Some early acceleration, setting up a large Awaken the Woods, hopefully. So then we're in prime position to top deck Nissa. Turn 1 Adaptive was a nice top deck for sure. Opponent on a red deck, mono red so far. Bankbuster on 2. Could maybe be a deck playing the new Koth. And we found Nissa, so that's excellent. And uh, sure, we'll play a Loam Speaker over Scrap Gorger for now. Could awaken the woods for two. Kumano at least means a slightly more aggressive deck, so I shouldn't be necessarily playing around a uh, Brotherhood's End dealing three to everything. Because we could play Contaminator here. And start beating down, or we could awaken to try and ramp into Nyssa a little bit better. Next turn have five, six mana. So it's not quite a lethal Nyssa. So maybe playing Contaminator for now is okay. Uh, 
and that gives us a bit more insurance in case there is a board wipe incoming. Yeah, there's a new cloth. So it can deal 4 damage to a creature. Likely takes out Contaminator. And then now we could play Nissa. We could Awaken the Woods for X equals 3. Still attack Koth. Although Brotherhood's End would be painful. Whereas if I play Nissa, it will be under pressure from Kumano, I guess. Could just play another Contaminator. Finish off Koth. Tank the opponent for 4. Then might still get the edge here. Could also play Scrap Gorger and just finish off Koth and not attack our opponents. Sure. And then with a lane, we would be able to play a 7 mana Nissa. Although, happy to awaken the woods first. Okay, Mightstone can take out Contaminator here. And then the Bankbuster gets to draw, thanks to the two Power Stone mana. Boseichu, sadly not a forest. Could blow up an artifact or enchantments, but... Uh, Think go big or go home at this point. Awaken the woods first and then next turn Nissa certainly lethal. If I play Nissa now, while I could ultimate, it's gonna be somewhat lackluster. Sax equals five. And attack for four. Okay, let's hope to dodge a sweeper. So, eight mana for artifacts. Not quite enough for a Skitter Beam Battalion, but a Cityscape Leveler will do. Although we should be able to beat it with Nissa pretty handily. Adaptive down. Don't think we can really use a power stone for a whole lot. And a nice minus seven. Got quite a few forests in play. Alright, GG's. Sweet. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw, and seems fine. Scrap Gorger into Contaminator, and might be close to a mirror match. Could also decide to get a forest here, since we have an Awaken and a Defiler, so we have a few mana sinks. So don't mind making sure we hit our land drops. Beast Caller on two, so more of a stompy deck than a true ramp deck. Probably still play Contaminator if Scrap Gorger survives. Try and hold off the Beast Callers. And then uh, the Filer could also start growing the team. Double Pack Leader, ouch. Okay, so Beast Caller 5-5 five, five, and 4-4 four, four respectively. Well, if I trade, they get to move two counters. Don't know if I have a choice. If I take nine down to six, I don't see how we survive either. A 
What if next turn we awaken the woods for three? Does that do anything? And then they can attack with all. I can chump Beast Caller, take six. And then on the following turn, we would have four, five, six, seven mana. But if I ultimate Anissa, we don't have any attackers left. If I play Defiler, they attack with all. I would be forced to chump block. So. Yeah, kind of running out of options here. I guess we'll uh, awaken for three and then next turn maybe hope to find some more spells we can play. Another Awaken. Well, we can chain these together, I guess. If I play a Defiler, three mana doesn't cast anything else. So now Awaken for six. And then uh, Scrap Gorge also grows. Is there a reason for me to maybe hold this one back to discourage pack leaders from attacking? Yeah, that's reasonable. We'll just do it for x equals 5. Bones got 3 mana. And uh, definitely jumping Beast Caller. And then we could trade for either the Canker Bloom or Adaptive. I guess trade for Adaptive. Don't think the Destroy Artifact or Enchantments really matters. Right, I guess they can sacrifice to proliferate, but now we don't take any damage, so that works for me. Okay, we have a lot of mana. So if I were to play Nissa and just ultimate, then we control four, ten forests. So four creatures get plus ten, plus ten. Yeah, I think that's lethal here. Could also cast a bushwhack first, get another forest, but this should be plenty. So yeah, I guess we found a way to survive the large beast caller just by going wide with a few tokens. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw. Hand seems like a keeper. Adaptive into Loam Speaker. And then uh, Defiler can maybe pump all the Dryads. Opponent on a Red White Tokens deck. Could be featuring Mondrak alongside Fable. Alright, so do we want to awaken for two? Do we want to play a Loam Speaker? You can also use Boseju to blow up one of the enchantments. Loam Speaker would grow the Adaptive up to a 3-3. So that's pretty neat. Sure. Don't think I'm interested in channeling Boseju. Alright, get to untap. And then probably awaken to set up Defiler for next turn. So awaken for four.
could top deck Nissa for the win. Although for now the plan is Defiler to add counters to the team. Emperor deals with the Loom Speaker and can pump the Shaman next turn to attack. Okay. Can block the one ones here. Slash kills Loam Speaker. And announcements will draw. So now what? Do we want to awaken again? Go incredibly wide, and then next turn Defiler, Loam Speaker, pump the team. Or do we Defiler, Loam Speaker now, make a whole bunch of tutus. I kind of like Awaken again. Just kind of go over the top here. So X equals 7. I want to get immediate value in case of removal, so the more tokens the better. Keep watch for intruders. Okay, Flame Stoker, and I'll block a uh, Samurai. Another Emperor to take it out, fair enough. Stomper's not bad either. So, do I want to pay a life here is a question. Yeah, that's probably fine. And then are we attacking? This is 3 times 8, 16, 24. Opponent's got 3 blockers. So I guess 5, 15 goes through. But they're all forced blocks. And then we'd have 3 blockers back. I guess we can attack the Wandering Emperor and keep a few more blockers back. 3 tokens at Emperor. They could trade, double block, so I guess it's got to be four tokens. Sure. At which point they probably let it go. And then next turn we can try an all-out attack. I guess that's it, then. Would love to top deck Nissa. The new Wandering Emperor card could be pretty devastating here. But I'm not sure if they're running it. It's not the best in a token stack necessarily, although it does, of course, make tokens. Another wedding announcement. It's acceptable. Reflection, copy shaman. And we'll be blocking. Question is how? Burn down the house, I guess, could wipe the entire board here. So I guess that's a reason not to block the 3-3. Three, three. Something like this. Sure. Hmm. 
Okay, now they're awaken. Does that trigger Defiler? I don't think it does. So, yeah, just attack with everyone, see what happens. Sounds like a plan. Alright, awesome. Close one here against Red White, but I guess Awaken the Woods, going wider than the Tokens deck. Okay, we're on the play. Yeah, our hand is definitely slow to get going, so an aggressive start could punish us, but it's got the tools to maybe ultimate Anissa at some point. Turn 3 Stomper, turn 4 Awaken for a bunch. Opponent's Naya colors with the farm hands. And Awaken's also good in multiples. So next turn Awaken for 3 already enables Stomper to attack. Restoration. Okay. Not liking our chances so far. So next turn, how much damage can we do with Nyssa? Play a land, we've got 9 forests, and then 3 attackers getting plus 9, plus 9 and trample. Yeah, that should do it. Let's see if there's a board wipe incoming. Depopulate, yep. Yeah. And that's a setback. Well, I think we still just awaken for four. And then next turn, try again. Would still be a very lethal ultimate. Forge is fine. Can make some tokens. All right, it's go time. They can maybe kill one token here, but don't know if that's going to save them. Can float some mana response. Play adaptive attack. And that should still be plenty. Awesome. So even through a depopulate, that's impressive. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw. Hand seems fine. Adaptive into Scrap Gorger, into Contaminator maybe. Opponent also on a green deck. And one of the potentially beatdown variety. Don't necessarily want to trade here when Adaptive can easily turn into a 4-4. So next turn, probably fine with a Contaminator. Could also Stomper set up Awaken the Woods, which would be better if we had a Nissa in hand. Okay, Foundry definitely points towards a Beatdown deck. Gwena, okay, that's scary. So opponent gets to ramp out something crazy next turn. So don't know if this contaminator is gonna be good enough anymore. Opponent's got their own contaminator. And we get to untap. Nothing to get rid of with a scrap gorger here, so it doesn't get any oil counters. So is it time to awaken the woods? Do we just play another contaminator? The longer we can wait on awaken, probably the better. If we play Stomper first, it also adds an extra mana. We'll try it this way. And then. If I attack with Contaminator, what does your opponent do? They could double block and we take out Gwena, which I don't mind. And then we still have two blockers for the opponent's Contaminator. And if they just trade, that's fine by me. 
Sure. Opponent takes the trade. And then now the Scrime Gorger can actually exile something. Ooh, a Tyranax. That's a scary one. Eight eight, trample, ward four, haste, toxic four. Well, I guess I can double block it. It's probably not gonna get any better for me. Exile the Rex. And then I has the time to awaken. Now let's wait one more turn. Play Stomper. Oddity, that one could easily transform too. Gwenna can use the abilities of creatures as well. Opponent sends in everyone. So we'll take 10. Okay. Gonna need something pretty special off the top. Bushwhack to trade for Oddity, maybe. Another Stomper is not the worst. So we can keep Scrap Gorger on defense and then it can turn into a 3 3. Or we can awaken the woods to make a few chum blockers, although Oddity will give the team trample next turn. Attack for 4 and then. Yeah, this turns into an 8 8 trample. Probably just uh, pass. And then Scrap Gorger trades for Canker Bloom. Double Stomper in front of the transformed Oddity. And then a turn after, try and cast a large Awake in the Woods. Okay. So these are kind of forced. Now they have a combo trick here for one mana. It's gonna be rough, and looks like they have one. Tyvar stand to make indestructible. Yep. Okay, I think we're pretty dead now. Don't think Nissa can save us anymore. Gonna awaken for six, and then Bona still has 12 power worth of tramplers, so that's just enough here even without activating a Mishra's Foundry. All right, GG's. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play. Hand seems keepable. Adaptive into Scrap Gorger. And then a Contaminator could be pretty nice alongside Adaptive. Maybe even proliferate the oil counters on Scrap Gorger to turn it into a 3 3. Put it on a white deck. And a bank buster, okay. Let's bushwhack for a line first. And smash. If we want to play around a depopulate, I may not want to commit another contaminator. Instead we can play a stomper to at least get an extra land. Okay, wedding announcements points towards tokens and Nissa. 
Okay, so in that case, Stomper sets up Nissa a little bit better. Probably see them trump the adaptive. And then we can still proliferate with the contaminator. And then Scram Gorger needs a card in graveyard to pick up an extra oil counter. And our opponent explodes, alright, I guess a nice curve out start, and our one drop already up to a 5-5 five five here as you can see. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw. Hand has potential. Just wanna develop our mana, awaken the woods, and then Nyssa. Put under red blank, turn to harvester, always powerful. Hopefully they focus on the adaptive here. Could offer the trade. Sure. And then we'll stomp her before we awaken. We'll put on discarding Atraxa, so it's a reanimator deck. Contaminator, also an option now. Although, for plans to awaken into Nyssa, I think we're better off playing Stomper. Another Harvester. So next turn we could see a reanimation effect for sure. I guess we just awaken for the max amount here, which would be four. And then the Stomper gets to attack. Gotta hope the opponent's not packing any sweepers. So what's it gonna be? Cruelty. Okay. And their opponent starts from chapter one, so can take away Nissa, unfortunately. Still have Defiler plus Contaminator as a powerful combo here. Opponent takes out a token. Alright, so Defiler step one. Contaminator step two. And smash. Bones at four. Cruelty could put them down to one, and then we'll have to wait and see if they can stabilize. So it didn't need Nissa after all. But yeah, Awaken the Woods into Nissa, of course, is the big power play that this mono green deck is capable of. Outside of that sequence, the deck is pretty one dimensional, so maybe not the most competitive deck out there, but if you want to see big numbers and smash face with a new Nissa, this may be the deck for you. So that'll do it for today's gameplay. Want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.